Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone, wherever you are. Welcome to the third webinar in the Disability Inclusion Webinar Series organized by the UN SDG um, Business Operations Team. And this webinar is going to cover uh, inclusive HR organizing accessible online and in-person career fairs. I'm joined here with uh, my colleague, the one and only, who is Diego, who is always uh, a big supporter and um, uh, he's helping me during this presentation, as always. And uh, I'm very glad that you would be, that I'm very delighted that you, would, uh, that you could join us today. Um, okay, in this uh, presentation, first of all, let me um, do uh, say some housekeeping tips. Uh, please note that the presentation is uh, being recorded and transcribed and that transcription um, and recording with the presentation will be shared shortly after the presentation. After they are available, the recording. Um, first of all, let me give you a quick introduction about myself. My name is Heba Khalif. I am based in Alexandria, Egypt. I have a master's degree from the University of Birmingham in the United Kingdom in inclusive education. I worked in uh, an organi organizations inside and outside Egypt in the fields of disability inclusion, digital accessibility, website accessibility. And uh, I uh, gave uh, consultants and guidance in two organizations uh, setting up um, assistive technology labs. Um, I worked in the Biblioteca Alexandrina and the uh, German International Agency, uh, German Development Agency for International Cooperation, or the GIZ. I also worked in the FAO HQ and the FAO RNE in website assessment and assessment of their digital tools and platforms. And now I'm supporting the DCO um, and working in the disability inclusion with the seed funding countries, providing support to the 16 seed funding countries and also uh, provide technical support to other countries as well in the field of disability inclusion. So here um, we have the agenda of the um, uh, that you can see on the screen, the agenda of the slides of the presentation. Um, the agenda is, 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 is pretty agile. First, we will start with the introduction about the topic, uh, setting the basis and uh, the theoretical background about the topic. And then we will follow that with uh, an interactive dialogue uh, about what measures should we take um, before, during and after uh, the inclusive career fair. And we will follow that with hopefully with experience from the fields. If you want to share with us any experience that you might have organizing inclusive events. Um, but before starting, I'd like to know your expectations um, and your expected learning outcomes from the workshop. If you can please share with us in the chat, uh, what are your main expected outcomes uh, from this session? And feel free also to speak up if you want to just kind of say it out loud as well. Uh, you can raise your hand or you can just either unmute yourself as well. For a small group, there's about 26 of us in the call, Heba. OK, perfect. So what do you wish to learn uh, from from this session? And this is both to make it interactive but, and to also see if there's something that's not being addressed in the agenda already that we can that have can address. We don't have any comments yet. OK, should we move on? And then if uh, if anyone has any comments, please feel free to raise your hand, uh, virtual hand or just type in the chat. So we did, so, we did get a, a comment from Maida. She's saying so best practices on on the topic right at hand. So about creating inclusive career fairs. OK, perfect. There's another comment saying interested in knowing some best practices as well. Uh, mm -hmm. Somebody else, Donatella is saying, I wish to learn useful tips to organize inclusive events. Ingrid is saying how to put in practice what we learn about inclusivity. And I'll be reading all the comments so that Heva can, can keep track with um, what's going on in the chat at the same time. So a couple of more comments are coming in. Let's see if I can keep up with them. So Astrid is saying to understand what we can do at the country level versus what is managed at HQ level. So that's great. 
and just saying is saying how to attract talents who often are not included due to apparent disabilities. And Ranjita is saying inclusive recruitment and knowledge sharing. And Jesus is also saying how to um, create inclusive events. So not only career fairs, but also make events in general accessible. Sure. Um, and, the prison. Yeah. Yes. And this uh, so is the, the last comment. Sure. Like I saying that, that yeah, she agrees with Ingrid in in that to organize events, um, but also how to attract um, talents and persons with disabilities to the job openings. Sure. Um, one more comment. Mm -hmm. Saying how can we deal with this subject since this concerns persons with disabilities, because there is nothing about them without them. Great. Great. Um, thank you very much for all these shared comments. Uh, I believe that um, uh, many of the things that we, that are going that will be shared today can be applied to inclu uh, uh, organizing inclusive events in general, not only organize uh, uh, virtual um, visual, uh, or in-person career fairs. Um, so we'll be covering that, and most of the things that we will be d discussing can be done in the on the country level because. Um, they, they, they are uh, logistically and um, uh, are, are usually uh, dealt with, it, with, with it within the country level, not from the HQ. So I believe this this could be also covered. Uh, and of course, feel free if I didn't cover anything during the presentation, feel free to uh, speak out um, uh, unmute you, yourself and, and say that and also share with us on the chat. So um, first, let me give you um, a brief overview about the high impact, um, high common uh, services, high impact common services. Um, we have, we, as we can see in these uh, slides, that the high common impact services are in line with the 2030 agenda, and uh, they evolve under a number of aspects. The first one is cost efficient. Uh, so that means that we provide 10 to 15 services um, with the highest cost avoidance and with the best quality. Uh, we are looking at quality improvement um, and we're looking to increase uh, um, increase the services uh, and increase service delivery in both speech and volume and with the uh, with the, um, with, with, the, with, the, with the with the with a high level of cost avoid avoidance. Um, also, um, we, we, we have to encourage good practices, uh, leveraging uh, entity expertise. Um, and this is the, another area which is uh, the high impact, common impact service concentrate on, focuses on. Uh, the next uh, area is disability inclusion. And inside this area, we have three uh, aspects, which are inclusive HR, inclusive ICT, and uh, physical accessibility. The fourth, uh, the fourth area is the gender inclusion, and inside this area, we focus on gender parity, uh, responsive procurement, and PSEA. Um, in the environment and uh, environmental sustainability area, we focus on two aspects, uh, which are renewable energy and decarbonization. And uh, uh, please, Luis Diego, if you feel if you feel that I missed, uh, I forgot to mention something. Uh, please feel free to jump in and uh, and correct me if I said something which is inaccurate. No, that's perfect, Heba, and it's to be able to to leverage the business operation strategy, to be able to implement good practices from other UNCTs, what they're doing, and be able to learn from them um, the same way that you learn. If you have a good practice, also to share that for others to to benefit as well. You. Thank you so much. Thank you. So in, in the introduction, we have we will speak about the basics. As we all know uh, that we have 1 billion persons with disabilities worldwide and 90 to 80 percent of, of these uh, uh, population are of working age and are unemployed. So there is a relationship, a, a, a correlation between disability and employability. Um, this is due to many factors, of course. Um, um, first of all, it's, it, as we all know, that disability results from the interaction between uh, physical, mental, sensory impairments and the existing barriers in, in the environment. They could be institutional barriers or attitudinal barriers or uh, structural or physical barriers. So um, 
these two factors, when they are combined together, uh, the disability happens. And one of the uh, huge impacts of uh, disability is the unemployability of persons with disabilities. First of all, recruiters uh, do not uh, are, are not completely aware of their capabilities, the capabilities of persons with disabilities. Uh, recruiters don't know how to reach out to them. Um, and persons with disabilities do not know how to reach out to recruiters and, uh, um, and, and job opportunities. So that is what we are going to speak about in the uh, next few slides. So why do we have to uh, organize um, uh, virtual uh, career inclusive career fairs? It has benefits for uh, organizations for persons with disabilities and for persons without disabilities. So I'd like you to um, uh, unmute yourselves, feel free to speak up. And what do you think? What are the benefits of the organizations if they if they um, uh, organized a uh, um, an inclusive career fair? Well, so I raise my hand to speak about it. Um, well, I think that it is a great opportunity to give opportunity for different people to develop the, themselves in a personal and professional um, way. And I believe also that is that it is a great um, opportunity to have different backgrounds, different perspectives about how the the company can do um, its purpose, its mission with a better view and a better reflection about the outside world. So if you have like 1 billion people that, um, that have disabilities and in our um, work environment, we do not have none of them, then how are we reflecting the world outside? How can we think about disability? How can we think about inclusion, inclusion, gender parity, and other types of diversity if we don't reflect in our own, own workforce and how can we um, be a better place with the not have uh, gave opportunity to people? Um, but also um, in, the, in the meaning of career affairs, the, the, um, to have inclusivity and diversity, it is a, a great um, manner to, I don't know, to improve people's skills, um, learning to, to, for them to be able to express themselves, to, to do their contribution. So I think um, kind of, it is a, it is a, a via that is double. Um, on, not only the, the person um, who is diverse and um, but but also the company, they both share um, gains um, about um, providing a fair career in a, an, a work environment that is inclusive. Thank you, thank you very much. Yes, of course, when organizations uh, organize uh, career fairs, they, they have the, the opportunity to tap into an un, uh, um, an, a pool of, un, uh, of, of talents, talented individuals that have a very high level of resilience and determination. Um, also, um, organizing uh, inclusive career fairs open up the perspective of the organization to provide a more diverse and inclusive working place. And uh, as the United Nations is um, is mainly concerned with the human rights, uh, basic with the human uh, with, with the basic rights of all human beings, including persons with disabilities. One of the one of the main uh, uh, essential human rights and basic human rights for everyone is to, the right to work. And of course, when you organize a, a, an inclusive inclusive career fair, you give the, this opportunity to UN entities uh, uh, to 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 network together, um, to establish networks with persons with disabilities, to establish networks um, to um, between persons with disabilities and persons without disabilities, uh, which will result on a more diversified, um, inclusive uh, inclusive working environment. Uh, do uh, should I should I move on or? Or anyone would like to share if there's any hands raised? 
I don't think there's any hand raised. I'm sorry, Ingrid, that we didn't see your hand earlier, but yeah, feel free to, to raise oh, your no hand. Problem, some reason, there is one, one other hand. So if, if you do see that we don't call you, feel free to just kind of let us know. So Claudia, um, I see you have your hand raised. Yeah, good morning. Good morning from El Salvador. How are you? Um, um, just wanted to share. Um, we had the experience of having um, someone with disability working at our office, and it's been a really, really good experience for us. Uh, this person uh, occupied the position of receptionist, and she has been a great support to our office. She will be um, moving out of the country in the following months, and, and it's a pity for us to know that she won't be around. So we have been uh, planning on finding someone under the same uh, uh, characteristics to say someone with disability. And in the past, when we were looking to fill this position, what we did is that we came close. Um, I'm trying to relate this to the uh, career fairs. Um, that is not so popular in our, um, in our, uh, 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 country, but what we did is that we came close to uh, organizations, disability organizations, and we were able to find people that do have skills and that we were, uh, they are able to perform certain kinds of jobs that we at the office can accommodate. Like we shared in previous sessions, um, Offices need to be really, really accommodated uh, to supply the needs they have. Our office has, has some, but not all of them. So we, we tried to find someone that that could make the match, the match on what we could give, or we could provide, and the match on her condition. And it was really good. So we're going to keep that uh, possibility on opening this position to someone under the same conditions. So uh, career fairs must be really good because you can find a variety of possibilities on hiring someone uh, uh, in, under this uh, um, um, conditions. I'm sorry, I'm a little stuck here with the language, but um, you can also do that. You can also come to uh, organizations and disability organizations, and they're pretty willing to help many times to provide you with people that are looking for a job. And then you have um, like a group of people that you can interview and they can come along. And recently we also had our internship program, you know, UNFPA um, internship programs. We had two people uh, with disabilities doing a six month internship. One of them, uh, because of his condition, uh, rather doing it from home. So he did it um, uh, office, home office work, but uh, it was it was really good having his, uh, his ideas come to uh, uh, prepare a disability plan. So it's been really good. And uh, I share this information and these um, experiences. So maybe it will be helpful for another offices. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for sharing this uh, very valuable and useful experience. And also, um, this uh, leads me to, to talk more about the benefits for persons with disabilities from organizing uh, per, uh, virtual and in-person career fairs, especially in low-middle-income countries where uh, transportation uh, are not always accessible. For persons with, with physical impairments, especially with mobility impairments, it's very hard for them to uh, take public transportations and go to uh, different uh, companies and organizations to for job hunting uh, purposes. But when organizing uh, a career fair, all the uh, job uh, uh, the, the job opportunities and recruiters are um, will be existing on one place, and all uh, the person with a disability will have a, a, a lot of variety and opportunity to choose uh, the decent job that is uh, tailored to his or her needs. Um, so these the, the benefits for persons without disabilities is that they will increase that will increase their awareness about disability itself. Uh, as you know, the 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 the, the 
when we increase exposure to persons with disability, that's one. That's when uh, the society's perspective and perceptions are going to change and uh, the society is going our uh, there's uh, the public awareness is going to be increased uh, by building more and more networks and joint activities where uh, persons with disabilities and persons without disabilities participate equally. And of course, uh, when we are talking about cost avoidance, uh, you can imagine if uh, if uh, all the organizations are going to do like job postings, announce jobs on Facebook, do separate interviews, uh, do, uh, do uh, launch job uh, application. Uh, 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 call, call for job applications. If if all organizations could do it in the in, in one place and time, this would, would of course be a large or a high level of cost avoidance. So what are the three phases uh, that we have that we have to go through in order to organize um, a, a, an inclusive uh, career fair? We have to question ourselves and ask our, uh, and ask ourselves what are the measures that I need to take before the event starts? What measures do I need to take during the event and what measures I need to follow up with? after the event because most people would think okay i'm going to take all the precautionary measures and all the accom reasonable accommodations and everything before the event starts and during the event but they are going to you know forget about after the event when the event will finish uh, they they would they might think okay i i don't have to do anything after uh, in this stage but this is of course not very true because there are things that need to be done after the event as well so now again, uh, because we are, uh, you know, we are very much uh, looking for your uh, interactive participation uh, here in this uh, slide. As you can see, we have three questions to ask. First, we will ask uh, question one by one. First, what do you think uh, we need to do before the event starts? Please feel free to unmute yourselves, raise your hand, share your comments in the chat. And just the comment earlier, Heba, that. Um... They wanted to know how to do accessible events in general. A lot of these things that you're going to be sharing, they apply to to events, right? Where, where you want to engage persons with disabilities and involve them. Yes, definitely. Hello. Yes. Yes. OK, here I feel that um, when we are talking with people with disability, we are we are talking about some uh, specific need for our colleagues. So in this, in that regard, it will be good to have an interact interactive dialogue with them so that we can know exactly what they what they require, what they will need for doing that during that process. And because of because of that dialogue, we'll also understand their their specific need and how they are what what are they thinking or what their expectation they will need from that process so in that then we'll know how to lay the ground rules properly and how to do all the follow-up after the, the, the program okay so what do you think we need to do before before the event starts you said that we have to connect and network with organizations of persons with disabilities which of course a very very uh, valid point yeah so in terms of the of the venue that is, you, you're going to select the venue. Do you think there are certain measures that you have to take into account when you select the venue uh, or the location of the event? Yes, I'm very sure of that because for uh, maybe you cannot have the program with uh, uh, targeting this special group of people, maybe, you know, please, that is not. Uh, uh, reasonably uh, reasonably uh, conducive that they don't have good accommodation that you're, you're not be able to provide that specific accommodation for them for example like you have a you know, or big hotel conference room that that would not cope with their 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 maybe their bathroom the bathroom the the state the bathroom state will not be able to accommodate those places and you don't have ram to move people with, with people that are with a, a wheelchair users you don't have a good accommodation for them, so you have to you have to get a, a D location where you have to accommodate them properly to be able to uh, enter and exit their 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 the premise where they'll be having the program. 
Perfect, perfect. Thank you very much. So selecting accessible uh, um, location for the event is oh. is uh, is the key is a key and essential element in uh, in choosing um, uh, or in selecting the venue your venue. So oh. the so let's let's just Hello. move on. Yes. We just have two two comments on the on the chat. Um, so one of them I think from Hida is saying um, that honestly she didn't get the point get the point of the event, like which event are you referring to? And I think it's referring to a, an accessible career or inclusive career fair, right? Yes, or any or kind of event, or any, any kind of event that you're, you're, you're planning to make this event as inclusive as possible, being a career fair, being any event. Yeah, perfect. Whether it's online, like virtual or in person. Or physical, yes. And then there's another comment from Nicola saying, check the vendors who have disability inclusive documents included when they registered in the system, the procurement mm -hmm. system. Mm -hmm. Yes, sure. So if we look at this uh, slide, uh, before the event starts, and I mean any event, being a career fair, being a conference, being anything, we have to secure sufficient time in advance for uh, preparing for the event. We have to prepare ourselves very, very well, so we have to uh, pr start preparing very early on. Also, connecting with persons with disabilities, as uh, our colleague uh, uh, thankfully shared, um, because they are very willing to provide us with candidates um, uh, and they are going to reach out to persons with disabilities and make them um, participate in the career fair. And if we uh, hold the discussion, uh, assessing also the main employment challenges for persons with disabilities uh, in your countries. This is very, very important because every country is different than the other and every country faces uh, unique challenges when it comes to the employability of persons with disabilities. For example, let's say in Egypt, um, people tend to put categories to persons with disabilities and think that they are going this person with this certain impairment are going to work in this certain job, type of job. Like for instance, they, they think that people with visual impairments will work on in a telesales job and, uh, you know, a phone customer service. service. Um, persons with uh, a physical impairment uh, might work as clerks or in the HR uh, management or, or as officers or anything like this. Um, people with hearing impairments might work on supermarkets and jobs that do not require a lot of human interaction. So we tend to um, put persons with disabilities and label them and put them in boxes and try to pick out jobs that we think are fit for them. But of course, as we always say, nothing is um, uh, about us without us. So we have to also consult persons with disabilities. Also, we have to approach universities and other educational entities when we are uh, planning to organize uh, an inclusive career fairs because some universities have uh, a special service provision facilities that provide educational services and accessible documents to persons with disabilities. We have that in Egypt and maybe it's, it, it exists also in a number of other countries. Um, we have to form an event planning and implementation task force and divide the, the implementation plan into tasks and assign uh, each uh, person or each member of this task force, as a task force, a specific task, so that we, we would be um, uh, we we would be able to track uh, which steps uh, are done and which steps are still need to be implemented. Um, also, as uh, as discussed, we have to uh, to uh, look for a place with reasonable accommodations provided, accessible entrance, accessible exits, accessible uh, conference uh, meeting rooms and halls, um, uh, accessible doorways, as we discussed in the in the previous webinar. Um, uh, the the circulation of the place has to be accessible as well, and also accessible parking. We have to um, we have to make sure that the, the drop off area and the surrounding area uh, outside the, the the place where we will hold the career fair is also accessible. Also, assigning accessible focal person um, and a backup um, uh, to address all accessibility and reasonable accommodations uh, issues, so that persons with disabilities, when they face any when they encounter any issue, they would know. 
what, who is the go to person? They would the, the, the contact of the this person would be provided on social media pages on, on the events website um, so that if, if if any person would require a certain type of reasonable accommodation, they can uh, reach out to this person. Um, um, and as we said, we have to do a wide range uh, or a, a, a wide selection of venues to choose the most accessible venue. And we have to, uh, to announce for our events using electronic and traditional forms of, um, of communication, especially if uh, your premises is located where uh, technology and digital tools are uh, a little bit limited. Uh, you have to use both analog and digital uh, tools to announce for your event. So some, sometimes we would use the radio or the TV or any kinds of, of, of traditional media to announce for the event. Um, we have to also follow a twin track approach in our outreach plan. We have, of course, we have to target um, uh, our mainstream media. And also we have to target uh, the special social media platforms that are, or, that are organized by and for persons with disabilities. Uh, why is that? Because uh, sometimes persons with disabilities would be uh, sharing their experiences and would be network doing a lot of networking using their own uh, social media platforms. Um, such as Clubhouse, for instance, where you have a lot of clubs organized by persons with disabilities and they hold a lot of uh, meetings, uh, virtual meetings uh, organized by persons with disabilities and with a uh, huge participation of from persons with disabilities. Um, also holding preparatory discussions and meetings with per persons with disabilities to discuss uh, the steps of the event and to take uh, uh, to, 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 to know their perspective or get to know their perspective is very, very essential as well. Um, so holding these preparatory meetings with the, with, the, with the huge participation from organizations of persons with disabilities and persons with disabilities are likely to increase our perspective and make us uh, more able to provide uh, an, an inclusive event, um, not just for persons with disabilities, but also for everyone. And we have to dedicate an accessible website and a social media page dedicated to sharing uh, information about the career fair or about the events in general, such as the registration or the documents that uh, um, job candidates need, need to bring along with them, the dress code, for instance. We share any information about the event, uh, the date and time and everything. Um, we have also to contact reasonable accommodation uh, uh, vendors um, and providers, service providers, such as sign language interpreters and uh, braille printing facilities. We have to provide braille agendas. We have to provide soft copies of the presentations that will be uh, shared during the career fair. And we have to do these in advance before the event starts with enough time or sufficient time that would enable us to share these resources with the registered uh, applicants. Uh, um, Emma, yeah, I have a quick question yes. about that. Just I've, I've never printed in Braille and what that entails. And if I mean, I know this is the ideal, but if it, it's not possible to print in Braille because of time or, or any other consideration, what would be the best kind of following just creating accessible documents and sharing them beforehand with the participants? Uh, yes, of course. Uh, braille, but, uh, braille printing is, is only essential if the digital uh, resources are limited. Uh, in, in countries where the internet connection is not so stable, uh, it's very hard for, uh, uh, you know, uh, people with persons with disabilities do not have uh, the assist assistive technology in ha handy. Uh, so in that case, you, you can contact uh, organizations of persons with disabilities because they are usually the ones who are responsible for doing a lot of braille printing. So you just will can, can share the presentation with them and they can print it for you. And if that would be difficult, of course, you can share the accessible version of the documents in advance. Um, also, uh, try to publicize for your event in the website of these organizations, uh, not only on the website or the social media uh, of the of the career fair, but try to share it with uh, on the organization's website. Um, uh, 
for any accessibility issues before the event is very, very helpful. Uh, because when you when you do that, uh, some sometimes uh, uh, something would 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 uh, pop up that you didn't think uh, about it in in beforehand uh, when you do this test run. So uh, this is very important. Uh, it's very important also to make sure that the location is accessible by public transportation and to provide directions in you in the website of the career fair. You provide directions on how persons with disabilities can reach uh, to your premises or to your venue from the drop off area uh, uh, using different public transportation systems. Um, be sure to provide specific directions. Uh, if you can, you can just um, copy the location from Google Map and paste it in there because uh, sometimes people would be using Uber or other transportation services. And also if uh, people would be using subway services or bus services, be sure to know the number of the bus or the number of the of the of the of the T train or the subway train that is going to reach out to this special place and provide this number along with any specific direction. Be specific as specific as you can about provide providing direction um, from uh, public transportation to your premises. Um, and of course, as we said, uh, the materials need to be accessible, especially job applications. Sometimes applications uh, which are created on Google Forms or Microsoft Forms might have a lot of uh, or some inaccessibility issues, although there are a lot of improvements uh, in that regard uh, from Google or from Microsoft. But always make sure that your application is accessible with uh, screen readers. Uh, always have someone to test, uh, uh, test it. Um, uh, uh, to ensure its accessibility. Um, also, um, as we as we as we also as we always say to provide to, to uh, we in, we stress the importance of providing accessible uh, copies, soft copies of the materials. You can you can uh, hold a brief career fair webinar. Um, inviting all the applicants who registered to attend your career fair and you can speak to them as we said about the schedule of the event, the documents that they need to bring along with them, the instructions, the dress code, um, the, the date and time uh, where the event will start. You share in the accessibility uh, contact person. You can also hold a pre-career visit, especially for persons with uh, visual impairments. This would be very, really, really helpful for them to have a layout of, uh, uh, or familiarize themselves with the place, especially if they are going to come to the event with no sighted guide, uh, using their white cane and independently traveling. So it would be very good to hold a pre-career visit, uh, pre-career fair visit. So now we come to the next interactive uh, question that we are asking you. What do you think that what measures need to be taken during the event? During the event, feel free to share with us your ideas. Yeah, but we also have a hand raised from you, um, you Miat Moon. If you'd like to also unmute yourself, please go ahead. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, uh, I would like to suggest two additional points uh, in planning states. Uh, one is that we may need to prepare the caption needs uh, for the hearing uh, impairments. Some of the hearing impairments, uh, uh, person with disability, they 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 are impairments uh, happen in the adult age, and then they don't understand the sign language. Then they request their caption needs uh, like during the events, especially for the uh, online platform. So we may need to prepare for caption needs for them. And uh, second one is uh, the, uh, when we use the uh, PowerPoint presentations, uh, in that presentation, if we include uh, like figures and tables and also the picture, so for these uh, very detailed informations, like a uh, presenter should explain uh, you know, more detail, especially for the uh, visual impairments, or we should provide the, uh, the narrator uh, for uh, to explain the like these 
uh, fig, uh, figures and picture and devil, something like that. Yeah. Thank you. Over. Thank you. Thank you very much for these very valid points. And we were going to discuss them. So thank you very much for mentioning them. And uh, uh, to add to your uh, very important point about captions, uh, many of the online uh, meeting uh, uh, platforms like uh, MS Teams and Zoom and uh, Google Meet provide sometimes provide uh, electronic uh, captioning, uh, which is not very accurate um, many, many times. So it's it would be very um, uh, essential in the career fair to provide a professional uh, captioning service uh, uh, in advance so that uh, the live captioning service would be as accurate as possible. So because, you know, if the, the software um, uh, predicted the word uh, uh, incorrectly or in, uh, inaccurately, uh, the meaning would be uh, greatly uh, different. So it's very important to uh, to aim for providing professional live captioning service. And also for um, we will be speaking in details about the accessible presentations in the in the coming in the coming slides. Are there any other hands or should I just move? I don't see any other hands and I don't see any comments as well. All right, so here in this slide, as you can see, uh, a few points that we have to do during the event. We have to recruit volunteers to assist persons with visual impairment to navigate the, 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 the premises of the career fair, especially if these uh, persons are visiting uh, the, this uh, location for the first time and they don't have a sighted guide with them. And it will be very hard for them to read the signage, uh, directing them to the different um, uh, booths uh, of the different recruiters. Uh, and of course, when it's very crowded, I have this uh, myself as a person with visual impairments. I always experience that uh, even when I memorize the place by heart, um, when I'm in the middle of, the, of a crowd, a large crowd, uh, it creates a distortion because I depend on my ear uh, as, as, as my eyes in order to um, uh, create a mental map of the, of the place of, or the location I'm in. So usually when the place is very, very crowded, uh, this sense of echolocation or this, uh, this gets dis disrupted. So I'm not able to move around uh, efficiently when there are a, a large group of people. Uh, so it, it's always to, uh, helpful to provide volunteers to act as a sighted guide assistance uh, to persons with visual impairments uh, to move around the different booths. And it's 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 very good also if if you cannot do that, uh, you can make representatives. Uh, you if you, if if the place is set up uh, as like tables and chairs, and each table have like five persons. Um, or something you can you can make the job recruiters go to each table and speak to persons with disabilities on one to one and individually speaking to them about the different jobs they are offering because this will save them the time and the effort to try to look uh, and go to the different booths in case that they didn't want to do that. Um, also, uh, consider having extra, as we said, um, if you can print braille copies, consider always having extra. Uh, if uh, 100 persons are registering, consider having 150 braille copies of any job applications or agendas. Um, a very, yes, quick comment sure. on that. Should you have all the documents, for example, in braille, if you know only maybe there are two people um, that have a visual impairment. Should you just prepare for the people that requested it? Or I'm not sure if I understood correctly, you said for everybody that's coming, even though they, they may not need them. No, I meant that everybody that registered that they need them. Uh, you know, as I, as I said, that um, uh, it will be very good to to pub publicize uh, the applications of the uh, or to register in the career fair in advance. And within this application, be sure to include uh, an, an, uh, a question about reasonable accommodation that uh, the users might need. So when they register to attend the career fair, they, they would include if they need a braille copy, if they need you to send the presentation in advance, if they need sign language interpretation or live uh, captioning or any kind of uh, or cited guide even or any kind of reasonable accommodation you might apply. So always, I mean, if two people or two persons register that they need braille copies uh, of the agendas and the applications, be sure to prepare three or four 
you might you might not know maybe uh, one of these persons will will share uh, the 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 event uh, the, or the career fair with one one of their friends they they could bring along uh, one of their friends so always be prepared and share and and uh, have um, extra bird copies handy um, right. in and terms of yes sorry and and in the case that there isn't anybody requesting it then then there's no point in having them and there's one and you can answer that that comment right after I read one of the comments. Pity this asking um, if they organize a career fair at the country level, what is the type of support, technical, financial, et cetera, that can be provided or that the global level can give? Um, uh, I can speak about the technical part. Uh, I, I'm, I don't I'm not sure about the financial part. Um, but I, I, you mean the technical support that you might need from within the UN or from other from outside sources? If you could elaborate. I think she meant from global level. I'm not sure if she's meaning like DCO or each entity specific HQ. I know at least from from the DCO level, from what I'm aware of, um, the support that is being provided is technical like this, right? So the, the way that we're doing this webinar Globally, if you're organizing a career fair and you would you know, want a specific kind of session for your team on how to prepare and make sure that everything is being addressed, um, we can do that. Financial, I'm not aware of. Um, we know that we're working with some seed funding countries that receive some funding. Um, it was seed funding, so it was symbolic mostly. Uh, but the idea was to be able to kind of get these things going, including the, the career fair and several other um, activities with, within the business operations. Um, I think entity specific, um, each entity would have to check on that and see if it can be, you know, cost shared. If anything is there. Uh, okay, uh, should I should I move on or are there any other comments? Yeah, I think so. And if, if you'd like more <laughs> to elaborate more on that, just feel free to raise your hand or put it on the chat as well. Okay, uh, so if we look at food and refreshments, if the event or the career fair is going to include any type of refreshments or food, um, be sure to provide assistance to persons with disabilities. Um, uh, um, if the event, if the event will include refreshments, uh, persons with physical disabilities might not be able to. If you cannot provide an accessible uh, food and and, drink, and refreshment counters, um, be sure to provide assistance for persons with disabilities to be able to reach for uh, their uh, their food. And also um, consider having uh, uh, um, diverse types of food like vegetarian, gluten free. Uh, um, uh, or, uh, consider any allergies that uh, persons might have um, uh, uh, for certain substance or certain uh, certain foods. I mean, uh, so always try to make the food menu as, di as diverse as you can, especially when it comes to vegetarian and the gluten free, because as you know, persons on the autism spectrum uh, sometimes cannot digest um, anything made uh, anything gluten uh, that has gluten in it. So it, it will be very uh, beneficial to consider that when uh, choosing or selecting a food or refreshment menu. Also, uh, it is it is very essential not to use uh, flashy or moving objects as this might trigger seizure reactions or physical reactions towards individuals on the autism spectrum or autism uh, or uh, sorry or individuals with some sensory uh, disorders. Um, uh, try not to use fluorescent light lighting because this also triggers some reactions uh, for people with on the autism spectrum. Also describe in words any visual content being presented on the screen and be sure to alert any presenters to describe in words uh, any visual contents they present and uh, try to use uh, or try to um, alert all the the job recruiters to use the same tone when talking to persons with disabilities as um, and not to speak to them directly, not to their interpreter or their companion. And this is a general uh, communication guidelines for communicating with persons with disabilities, but it's very important when you're doing the, your preparatory phase to have a meeting with all the job recruiters and, and, and uh, other uh, individuals that will be interacting with persons with disabilities and to brief them about these, uh, these uh, communication and guidelines. And that's why I'm putting it in the presentation here. 
uh, also try to provide uh, uh, information about the location uh, of the event, including the emergency services at the restroom, uh, about the inform different information desks for all attendee for all uh, attendees. Um, at the start of every session, because you might not know, maybe um, not, not uh, a lot of sessions will be happening simultaneously, so different people will be attending different sessions, so be sure to include this information at the beginning of every session. Also, you have to take into account the position of the sign language interpreters and the captioners uh, at the front of the, of the room. Um, and reserve ne nearby seating uh, for per for persons with disabilities who are using these services or who requested these services in advance. So, if a person requested uh, a sign language interpreter or live caption, be sure to pro to, to provide a location for this person um, uh, in in the front seats. And 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 when it comes to the lighting of the room, be sure that the light. Is is not coming to 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 the, the sign language interpreter from behind because this will create shadows and this will make the person uh, with hearing impairment unable to quick uh, to clearly see the signs. Uh, the uh, the light should be come coming from the front uh, or to the side of the uh, person who is signing. And always ask uh, uh, ask the interpreters about their preferred uh, position because they are uh, the most uh, expert uh, experts in that field. They are going to direct you on the best position for them to stand. Um, and be sure when you are streaming this event online, be sure that uh, the 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 interpreter and the live captioners are able to be seen from all the different angles and able to be seen um, through the screen uh, using the online uh, platforms that you're using. Uh, if you are exhibiting some items or there are some banners, uh, be sure that uh, they are not blocking the path of travel and the right of way to persons using the white canes uh, from the the uh, the door to the to the place where the session is going to take place to the information desk where they need to go and register or they need to ask questions or if you have uh, the different booths uh, uh, for different job recruiters be sure that the entrance of the booth is clear uh, and the space is clear um, so that the person can stand um, in front of the information desk to ask any questions or uh, if they have any inquiries um, always have uh, a, a, um, a place, a chair for persons to sit because some persons with disabilities are unable to stand up for a long periods of time. So be sure to include uh, a seat in every booth. Also make sure that the tables are, um, are, are at wheelchair accessible and are at a wheelchair height and be sure to provide a chair on every table, as we say, for any person who might not be able to stand. Also, if you specify a process for, for which people can ask questions, um, like for instance, you can say if you want, if you need to ask any questions, please raise your virtual or physical hand or leave your questions in the chat box. Uh, just specify it verbally so that uh, persons with disabilities will know the pr uh, procedures if they need to ask any questions or, or have any inquiries. Um, many people with uh, with uh, many people who are blind or have low vision cannot be able to distinguish uh, distinguish the bo the booth by sight. So be sure to ex to explain uh, how the place is laid out uh, on on the right. Uh, you know, try to draw a mental map for the person who has a visual impairment, um, explaining in each direction which booths are located for which recruiters. Um, OK. OK. Um, make sure that all speakers are using the microphone and anyone who is asking questions is using the microphone, which is connected to the uh, uh, to the streaming online services. And here you can find uh, a brand of the one of the microphones that are um, recommended to be worn. Uh, 
uh, by the press, by the by the speakers. And this is very important because for some people with hearing impairments, um, echo presents a huge uh, barrier to them understanding the speak the, the, the words being spoken. Uh, so if the mic is far away from the speaker and there is an echo, um, uh, this would create a barrier. So be sure that everyone is close enough to the mic and the sound in the, the, the sound is in a good sound quality is provided. Um, you be sure to tell the presenters to repeat any questions uh, made by the audience or any comments that are that are written in the chat. And be sure to repeat it verbally to four persons to hear it. Just just like uh, my colleague Luis Diego is doing, he's uh, been uh, reading every comments in the chat so that I could be able to hear it. And also imagine if you have audience with visual impairments who are attending your online uh, career fair, they would be also uh, uh be very uh, benefited from hearing the comments out loud uh, always keep the uh, keep the de designated technical help person or team at hand uh in case any uh, any uh, technical issue um, uh, is encountered uh by persons with disabilities when they are using uh the uh, online platforms um, or in person platforms, if they are using their assistive technology, for instance, to uh, to fill in any job applications on the on the spot, uh, be sure to provide technical person who can uh, help them and assist them um, and 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 always remind them to request for this assistance early as early as possible in order for you to be able to provide it. Well, there, there's one quick comment from Hida. She's, or, or he, sorry, if, if I'm misrepresenting uh, the pronoun, but it's um, in an event, which kind of careers we can take um, for a person with a disability uh, advice? I think you, you mean sort of like a visual impairment. So what type of careers or jobs um, they can take? If I'm understanding the question and feel free to either chat or, or again, um, unmute yourself. To clarify, um, yes, yeah. yes, please go ahead. No, there was another comment from Perides saying that from Guatemala they're working to organize a career fair for the first trimester of 23 and they will update on the progress. Excellent news, Perides. And if we can support in any way, let us know as well. Yes, uh, yes, thank you. To go back to the to the previous question, what type of jobs people with disabilities can apply for? Or this is exactly what we were speaking about, that we we mustn't really um, think about it this way. We mustn't say, OK, people with visual impairment can work in these types of jobs. People with physical impairments can work in this other type of jobs. No, we you you. You leave it open to the person's own choice and the person's own qualifications and the person's own capabilities. So you and you 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 seek uh, job recruiters um, uh, from different and diverse uh, types of jobs, and you seek uh, part participations of persons with disabilities with their diverse di uh, diverse needs, and you leave it to the persons to decide. Um, which jobs uh, uh, do they uh, feel that they can do and be decent and be catered for their needs? And um, uh, you, they would speak to the recruiter, uh, recruiters, and uh, uh, hopefully they are going to 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 uh, to have the the jobs that they uh, that they dream of. So always leave it to the persons involved. Um, okay, uh, so. Um, a very important point that persons with disabilities, especially uh, persons on the autism spectrum or persons who have obsess obsessive compulsory disorders or persons with other sensory or mental uh, disorders, they might have involuntary body movements. And it's very hard sometimes to look away when you find uh, 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 someone um, experiencing this kind of inv uh, inv uh, involuntary body movement, but try always try to look uh, elsewhere and uh, try to communicate, uh, not using eye contact if it's going to be very difficult, and avoid remarking on these differences because uh, this, of course, will not resonate very well with the person who are ex uh, exhibiting. This. Um, also, try to communicate. Um, yes. 
There is one um, comment just if we can share the TORs of the planification, I think referring to the inclusive career first. I don't believe we have um, any TORs yet other than this presentation and recording, um, but it's a great feedback and I think it would be useful, you know, to have this whole um, sort of whether it's a transcript turned into a TOR or, um, you know, just a guide on how to implement them. Not sure if you're referring to that or if you're referring to TORs for a consultant to organize a career fair, and that would be something different as well. Let me know if which one it is so we can both. Okay, <laughs> perfect. Um, so we haven't created it yet, but um, I think it's good feedback. I'm not sure um, how soon we could create them if, if possible, but um, if you have anything to share about that. Yes, uh, we, we can we can create them, but after uh, I don't think I can do it after uh, before the 24th of November. Um, so after the 24th of November, I can check um, the the agenda of uh, and the workload, and I would be happy to do it uh, as as um, as as long as I have uh, as I have time. And uh, if you want to hold uh, in the meantime, if you want to hold any bilateral meetings uh, where you can prepare some points of discussion. Uh, if you want to organize career fairs, um, I would be happy to do that. Uh, and we can, of course, I'll be joined. Uh, I mean, hold meeting you and I and uh, Lu Luis Diego as well. Um, so we can always uh, do that if uh, if you have time, Luis Diego. If you have time to do that, that it would be okay. Okay. Um, uh, okay. So uh, as we said, as we said before, we try to read out any informations that are available in the chat box. Um, um, uh, uh, read it aloud so that, so that uh, uh, audience can hear it. And be sure that speakers can face the camera directly. Nothing is uh, is um, standing in the uh, or blocking the vision uh, of their lips and mouth and face. Uh, because if uh, you have uh, persons with hearing impairments who are following your event online uh, and who are lip readers, it is very helpful for them to be able to see the mouth of the speaker to be able to lip read. And also uh, alert the speaker to speak slowly if there are uh, lip readers, um, uh, because um, uh, even if they are, uh, uh, also this would be helpful also for sign language interpreters. Uh, when the speaker speak, speakers speak slowly, the, this would enable people with hearing impairments either to lip read uh, or it would enable sign language interpreter to be able to sign uh, correctly. All right. Uh, this is very important uh, to be able to uh, make sure that the, your virtual background contrasts with the speakers' faces, uh, because some uh, some uh, people with visual disabilities might be able to distinguish between uh, the foreground and the background colors. Also, if you uh, if, if the background is clear without shadows, uh, this will enable people who are lip reading or people who are uh, looking at the sign language interpreter to see clearly. Um, uh, also, you you have to be mindful of the uh, people who are color blind. Um, uh, always, some 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 people who are color blind um, might not see the different shades of uh, of red or blue. Uh, so make sure that uh, if you want to, to something to be distinguishable, uh, use a very high contrast in order for them to be able to distinguish it. Um, and this wouldn't create a barrier for them if you're, if you're using colors that are uh, very close to each other in the sh in, in the shade shading. Um, for people with uh, with uh, sensory disorders and people on the autistic autistic spectrum autism spectrum, it, it's very helpful to provide quiet areas away from uh, the stimulations in the environment. Because sometimes people on the autism uh, autis uh, people on the autism spectrum get overwhelmed with a lot of uh, sounds and a lot of things to see, a lot of visual, auditory, and uh, um, olfactory stimulations. Uh, this could make them overwhelmed, and so they might need a quiet space. 
just to um, to sit aside and to um, and to enjoy some quiet time for them to to have a break, and then their brains would be ready to receive um, an, uh, the other uh, or uh, another uh, uh, stimulations that are coming from the environment because they get overwhelmed very easily. Um, we are our brain, our brains are designed in a way or our typical brains let's say that typical brain, brains are designed in a way that they can distinguish between the foreground uh, uh, stimulations and the background stimulations so you're able to um, isolate uh, the no, the voice of the speaker uh, and make move it in focus and um, just move other humming sounds or sounds of the electronic devices or sounds of the speakers in the next room or sounds of the participants you move that to the background um, you will not focus on it but persons on the autism spectrum are not able to do that all the sounds uh, and all the visual stimulations that they receive and all the olfactory stimulations that there is information that they receive are uh, uh, entered in their brain with the same strength so you can imagine how overwhelming that might be so it's very important to provide a quiet space for them uh, to sit aside Uh, also, uh, as we say, provide try to provide signage and information at the beginning of each session uh, to direct users to the different facilities within the location of the career fair, and offer uh, um, and always offer assistance um, uh, with signing up, uh, signing up for uh, for lists or leaving contact information. Uh, or uh, filling in applications. If you have uh, these applications in a paper-based format, be sure to provide site assistance uh, for persons with visual impairments. Uh, I think we discussed this before um, about speaking into the microphone, but the, the additional point here is always assign someone to uh, to uh to pass on the microphone to the different uh audience or attendees if they want to speak um or share any kind of comments and always um uh, if you uh, if you want to uh, a person to speak always if you know their name be sure to mention their name first before asking them to speak because this will help them uh, uh, understand that you are speaking to them or directing uh, uh, or asking them to speak, especially if uh, there are lots of persons with visual impairments in the room. They might not see your uh, your hands uh, waving at them or your eye contacts towards them, so always speak their name uh, first before asking them to speak. So now we come to the third interactive uh, question that we have for this session. What should you do after the career fair or the event uh, uh, is finished? So please feel free to share with us any kind of measures you need to take after the event is done. Afternoon. <laughs> good afternoon. Well, hi, green good afternoon. Oh, hi. Um, I think. <laughs> yeah, I think what we have to do is I uh, have some feedback forms that uh, contains questions like was the venue, the the sessions accessible and so forth to who, whoever was um, in charge of the training to, to uh, uh, make unnecessary changes in the next uh, area to strengthen over. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. So having a feedback and uh, having a feedback form that measures uh, accessibility uh, and the user satisfactory or the attendee sat satisfaction level uh, in terms of accessibility is very, very important. And it helps also with the M&E practices. If you are organizations, of course, is, is, is engaged into uh, having an M&E uh, evaluation, monitoring and evaluation processes going on. This could also help in that. Yes. Any other comments? We do. We have a comment from Donatella saying, um, if she may, to be more inclusive and neurodiversity friendly. And I would suggest to use a clear communication style, as in avoid sarcasm, euphemism, and implied messages. 
as well as provide concise verbal and written instructions. Yes, that's exactly exactly right. And this is in general when communicating with persons with disabilities or communicating about persons with disabilities, always avoid euphemisms, avoid ableism, avoid, you know, um, condescending or patronizing uh, language. And you can always refer to the uh, United Nations uh, Disability Inclusive um, Language um, uh, Guideline, um, uh, which is really a very comprehensive resource uh, that that uh, clearly explains what uh, words should you be using and what what words should you avoid. So I really encourage you to uh, look at that. Uh, not only for people who are neurodiverse, but also for uh, anyone. But especially if you're talking about persons who are neurodiverse, try to make your communication as short as possible. Uh, use short sentences. Don't use metaphors because uh, sometimes they are un unable to understand metaphors. Um, uh, be sure to use easy, easy language, uh, like an easy read format. So instead of, for example, instead of saying the word comprehend, you can just say listen. Try to always use a very simple uh, language for them to be able to understand you and try to avoid complex sentences. Keep your sentences clear, simple and to the point. So. If we look at uh, this light, you can you can see that uh, some of the guidelines that we should be using, like make also uh, make sure that all um, emails, uh, resources, websites are accessible. And be sure to provide persons with disabilities to emails uh, with emails to follow up, uh, 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 and any contact information uh, for them to follow up. Uh, also. Uh, Provide any notes on slides or uh, materials um, distributed at the meeting uh, uh, in digital form to attendees uh, in an accessible format. And always be as clear as possible on what uh, what happens to submitted applications like uh, or resumes, uh, like when when are, so, so specify the dates uh, by which job recruiters will uh, will. Uh, provide feedback uh, about uh, them being rejected or accepted uh, for a certain job. Um, like like Paul Greena, Paul Greena here uh, thankfully uh, shared with us, also always provide surveys or survey attendees about their experiences attending this career fair and record any feedback uh, on uh, on access accessibility issues uh, so that you can avoid it uh, in the in the future. Here we have other things also to consider. You, you, um, uh, make sure to record um, the, all the sessions if possible. Uh, make sure to provide uh, transcripts for the sessions uh, if possible. Make sure to um, uh, prepare video briefs about the different uh, job recruiters uh, to, to share on social media uh, or websites. And, and be sure to record tem testimonial videos from persons with and without disabilities to relate and share their experiences attending these career fairs to encourage other uh, other pre persons to attend similar career fairs. And always uh, uh, keep uh, or, or uh, alert uh, the attendee uh, of upcoming uh, career fairs if you're planning to hold any upcoming career fairs. And keep communication channels open between job seekers and recruiters um, throughout the job fair and after the job fair uh, using the websites, um, the, 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 the career fair website, using the social media platforms. Um, now, this was the last uh, slide in my presentation. Please feel free to, uh, to uh, share any questions or comments you might have. Um, the floor is yours. I don't see any hands raised, but feel free to ask any questions or put it in the chat. A lot of colleagues have been asking about sharing the, um, the recording and the slides. We will do that after the webinar. We are a bit backed up, so give us a few days to do that. Um, and I guess I'll make a comment, Heba, just from 
I haven't organized a, a career fair and when I hear a lot of the ideal things to do, sometimes I feel like it, it could be overwhelming or sound overwhelming. So many things to take care of organizing the event itself without having to be accessible. Sometimes it's overwhelming enough. And I don't know if you can speak to that and maybe just say that, OK, it's a journey and uh, considering and integrating some of these accessible um, considerations um, slowly could also be a process um, realizing that you might not have, you know, the perfect accessible event from the start and doing the best to to reach there, but knowing that it's it's going to be a process. Uh, yes, of course, uh, inclusion and disability inclusion is a journey. I completely agree with you 100 percent. And we have to sometimes we have to, to take some incremental change, uh, changes, a little uh, changes little by little. But at the same time, uh, you have we have to be mindful uh, of the fact that if we uh, if we fail to uh, to apply these accessibility measures, we will be excluding uh, um, a group of persons from participating in this event because we we couldn't follow up with these with these uh, accessibility measures. So if we uh, we we, we uh, I, I always work with the children and their families. I know this might not be very relevant to this, but uh, the same principle can be applied. We always tell uh, our, the families and the children we're working with is to aim high and to have very high expectations towards anything we do. So let's say if you have uh, an expectation to make your event accessible with 100 percent, 100 percent accessible, you might not be able to do that because of any logistics, uh, logistical reasons or financial reasons. So you end up um, having your event uh, accessible with 90% accessible. But what if you set your expectation to have your event 50% accessible? Then you might end up by having your event accessible by like 20% or 30% because always your expectations um, do not always uh, become facts due to a lot of circumstances that surrounds uh, holding this event. So always be sure to aim high and to have as high expectation as you can and, and keep it as a motivation inside every, every each and every one of us. I'm going to make this event as accessible as I can so as not to leave anyone behind and so as not to exclude anyone. And I'm sure that this will all be translated into a more inclusive event and be and, and also we have to be mindful of the fact that accessible events are not only benefits persons with disabilities, but persons who are uh, chronically uh, sick or ill or something. Um, um, you know, it, it benefits everyone. Not I'm not only speaking about career fairs, but I'm speaking about um, any events that we are uh, planning to hold. Make it as inclusive as, as possible. Great feedback, Heva. I think it's a, it's a good approach, definitely. And we're getting a couple of comments in, in the chat as well. Um, a lot of colleagues asking for guidelines. Um, I think this is kind of supportive, um, technical support. I think as far as the guidelines of what to do, one, whether it's your entity that, that has guidelines or through the UNDIS guidelines as well, that we will share um, some, some of the links that you can access as well. Um, and Ranjita is sharing a um, very interesting fact about UNV. So she's sharing some of the figures of UN volunteers serving in different UN agencies. The total number of persons with disabilities serving in 2022 is 190, and they are in 84 countries with 22 different UN entities. Um, out of the 190 volunteers, 27 are international volunteers, and 163 are national volunteers. 87 nationalities and the average age is 34. Um, and then 166 volunteers are from the global south and 93 are women. So those are really powerful stats, uh, not only in disability inclusion, but also in diversity. So congrats um, for the effort. I'm sure it's it's taken a while and I think it's great to see that and to encourage other entities to aim for similar um, inclusion. Yes, um, yes, thank you very much for sharing these amazing statistics. Before concluding and uh, saying what your uh, main takeaways of the session, I'd like to invite uh, participants who have any similar experiences of organizing uh, any events 
uh, to speak up and uh, share with us the challenges that they faced uh, or the achievements that they were able to uh, to achieve, uh, the lessons learned. So uh, please feel free uh, to sh oh, sorry to share with us uh, your experience. And while we're getting, whether it's you want to unmute your mic or put it on the chat, um, also to let people know that um, we'll not only be sharing the recording and then so forth, but also we put in a feedback um, link. So if you can provide your feedback, it always helps us. And we put a lot of attention into it, the way that we can improve, the way that we um, you know, deliver the content in this specific um, topic. Kindly let us know. I think while people are sharing also, have I saw that you share the upcoming dates as well as, as the webinars and disability inclusion. And there are to realize there are many things going on at the end of the year and it's very tight. If you register, you'll receive the recording and um, and the resources. So you may have them there, even if you may not be available for one of the dates. And we're always doing two dates. So one is a bit earlier and one sort of mid morning New York to try to accommodate um, all the regions, even though we realize it's it's hard to do, and a lot of the times we miss some other regions. Um, but just kind of doing the best that we can. We did one uh, for I think Asia Pacific on Monday morning, um, specifically for for their schedule. So if we're also not tailoring to your region, let us know, and we can consider that as well. I don't see any hands yet. Or any other comments, Heba? Um, if you want All right. to give any yeah. concluding remarks or, or anything. All right, uh, so I, I just want to thank you all for attending this webinar on uh, organizing accessible online and in-person career fairs. Be sure to reach out to us uh, if you have any inquiries, uh, technical inquiries about organizing these career fairs. And be sure to register for our uh, webinar, uh, upcoming webinars, as uh, you can see in the slide. And I'd like also to have this opportunity to um, express my, uh, my, my, my big uh, thanks and gratitude you to Luis Diego, who is always helping me and supporting me in these sessions. So um, uh, please, uh, I invite you to, to also to thank him with me. And, and thank you very much for attending and uh, see you in the next uh, upcoming webinars on inclusive ICT, uh, creating accessible office documents. We have two dates. Please feel free to register to the date which uh, suits you more convenient for you. And uh, as Luis Diego said, we'll be sharing the recording and the presentation as uh, uh, as soon as they become available. Super, thank you so much. Thank Ella. You. I think it's I mean, just just a few last words not to, to kind of go on top. But I mean, it's I think it's been key the leadership in, in our team. Um, the chief is really, you know, behind disability inclusion and he's been, you know, he was behind all these webinars, creating a partnership to be able to facilitate whether it's funding resources. And I think that's a one of the key things that has um, kind of pushed this inclusive operations initiatives. Um, and if you can do that or you have those champions um, within you, I think it's one of the best things that you can do to open those doors. Um, and we're here to, to support in any way that we can. Thank you, Heba, also for your time. I know it's 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 been a lot and it's a packed month, but as, as much as we can support, um, feel free to reach out as well. Thank you, colleagues, and Thank you, we'll see you in the next webinars. Thank you. Take Thank care. you, Heba. You're welcome. Thank you.